Hello everyone. Welcome to a book haul for the month of March. I still have some back there. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I've got a couple of sh more than a couple to show you. So this first one I got just because it was payday and I wanted to treat myself to a book. So this was a payday purchase. Uh, strictly. And this is a cozy mystery and it is called The Broken Spine. This was written by Dorothy St. James. A small town assistant librarian discovers that protecting the printed word is harder than she'd ever imagined. In fact, it's murder. Trudell Beckett, known to her friends as True, finds herself in a bind when her library in lovely Cyprus, South Carolina, is turned into a state-of-the-art bookless technological center. A library with no book breaks, True's book-loving heart. Got a little tongue-tied there. So she decides to rescue hundreds of beloved tomes slated for the town dump. Under the cover of darkness, True and her best friends, Coffee and her best friends, coffee shop owner Tori Green and mysterious best-selling author Flossie Finnegan Baker set up a secret book room in the library's basement and prepare to open it to their most loyal, trustworthy patrons. But when the town's manager, oh, but when the town manager, who is behind the big push for the library's transformation, is murdered, True becomes the prime suspect. If she gives the police her alibi, she'll have to explain about the secret book room and risk losing the books. It doesn't help that the officer in charge of the case is her old crush from high school, who broke her teenaged heart. To keep herself out of jail and her beloved book room up and running, True, with the help of Tori, Flossie, and a stray brown tabby cat named Dewey Decimal, decides to investigate. And faster than you can say, shh. True finds herself on the same page with a killer who would love to write her final chapter. <laughs> Sounds really good. I've been wanting to get this. This has been on my radar for a bit, and so I finally got myself a copy of it. Now, this next book was a pre-order for me, and it's a series continuation. I'm only like two books into the series. Um, although this one's more like into the spin-off series, which I have not gotten to that yet, but it's still... It's a pre-order, regardless. And this just arrived, and this is Some Kind of Perfect by Krista and Becca Ritchie. And this is a steamy romance series. All it says on the back, it's just very short, says, Falling in love was just the beginning. Lily and Lo are childhood best friends and soulmates. Reich and Daisy are wild risk-takers and flirty adventurers. Connor and Rose are genius rivals and intellectual teammates. After 10 years of laughter, of heartache, and love, they're all back one final time. So last book in the series, like that ties the original series and the spinoff series together is what that sounds like. Now this next one I got specifically for, like there's a year-long readathon, a couple of year-long readathons that I'm trying to participate in, and some of them, some of the prompts out of all of those readathons, there's a handful of them that are non-fiction reads. Can totally handle that. But... There's even fewer of those, so like from this big ol' handful to like two prompts out of the whole year, I want to say, is three to self-help. I own no self-help books. So I decided to get myself a self-help book. So I was kind of looking around, um, and I found this one, and it is I Am Autistic, and this is a workbook by Chanel Mariah. So there you can see the whole cover. So... It says sensory tools, practical advice, and interactive journaling for understanding life with autism by someone diagnosed with it. So, um, and then it just has, there's a bunch of like watercolor designs, obviously journaling. So, the back says, in this first ever creative guide for both diagnosed and undiagnosed autistics, Author and illustrated Chanel Mariah offers an interactive tool to explain or make sense of their experiences. It also offers non-autistic people the chance to learn more about autism from someone who is autistic. Packed, full, packed with full-color illustrations, sensory elements, and spaces for reflection, 
This book is designed to be personalized to the individual's experience. Perfect for those interested in learning more about Autism Spectrum Disorder, ASD, getting an early diagnosis, and how being autistic can impact a person's life. It says this helps people feel less alone in their autism and brings knowledge to an often misunderstood condition. So for those of you who are new to my channel, um, and it does say, like my channel is an autistic reader. I am autistic and I'm a reader. I'm not creative enough to come up with a more creative title. So, um, and I was diagnosed at 36 years old, so later in life. And so I would like to learn a bit more. Um, obviously, everyone's experience with autism is going to be different. So, I don't know. So yeah, I got this specifically to fulfill a prompt. <laughs> okay, this next six books... Um, our, I got a tax refund for tax season in the United States. I'm not sure when and what the taxes are like outside of the United States. But in the United States, it's tax season. Um, got my taxes done and got a refund. So I decided to treat myself to a mystery book box from Willow Winters. I will have done an unboxing of these books. So I'm just going to kind of tell you a little bit. Now the darker the cover it with Willow Winters, um, the darker the tropes. So like a small town romance will be maybe like a light pink book in this discrete series, which is what I'm trying to collect. Or, but if I want like a mafia, it'll be like a dark purple. If I want, depending on how dark you want to go, the dark with the tropes and the trigger warnings, you know, the more trigger warnings, the more darker the book. That's what I'm saying. Trying to say. <laughs> Now, Willow Winters uses a pen name, kind of a pen name, but she abbreviates it for W. Winters. All of her books are spicy, so do be aware of that. Uh, the discrete version is Carter and Aria. This is the first book in a series, and I have all four. I got all four, because I said when I order this, the darker and more effed up, the better. So, I got this whole series. This series is a Beauty and the Beast spicy adult retelling. So book number one is Merciless, and I'll insert an image so you can see what it looks like. So I'll read the synopsis of Merciless. I will not read the synopsis of the other ones because it's a series, and it does say it's, this is book one. I should have known she would ruin me the moment I saw her. Women like her are made to destroy men like me. I couldn't resist her, though. Given to me to start a war, I was eager to accept, but I didn't know what she'd do to me that she would change everything. She sees through me in a way no one else ever has. Her innocence and vulnerability make me weak for her and I hate it. I know better than to give into temptation. A ruthless man doesn't let a soul close to him. A cold-hearted man doesn't risk anything for anyone. A powerful man with a beautiful woman at his mercy, he doesn't fall for her. So that is Merciless, and that's book one. I will tell you the titles of the other three, but I will not read the synopsis since it is a series continuation. Book number two, and I'll try to insert images here. Um, so that with the discrete series, there's nothing, it just has the couple's name on the front, nothing on the back. So for the synopsis and the title, you have to open it up, okay? So book number two is Heartless. Book number three is um, Breathless. And then the fourth book in this Beauty and the Beast retelling is Endless. Another book under W. Winters are the characters Daniel and Addison. As you can see, this is a darker one because it's a darker olive green. Not as dark as the Beauty and the Beast ones that I showed you. It's a little bit lighter as far as the color goes, so I'm assuming the tropes won't be as dark as the other one. So the title for this one is Possessive. And this one says... And I'll insert an image of the t cover. It was never love with Daniel, and I never thought it would be. It was only lust from a distance, unrequited love, maybe. He's a man I could never have for many reasons that didn't stop my heart from beating wildly. When his eyes pierced through me, it only slowed back down when he looked away, making me feel so damn unworthy and reminding me that he would never be mine. Years have passed, and one look at him brings it all back. But time changes everything. There's a heat in the eye in his eyes I recognize from so long ago. A tension between us I thought was one-sided. 
Tell me you want it. His rough voice cuts through the night and I can't resist. That's where my story really begins. This next book by Willa Winters, she co-authored with Lauren Landish. You'll see this, the other author, Lauren Landish, pop up again later in this video. Uh, the couple's name on this one is Isaac and Katia, I'm guessing is how it is said. And the title is Sold. I was only a boy when I saw my mother murdered in front of me. That does something to a man. It turns him hard, cold, and makes him an addict for control. In all things. My desires are dark, and what I'm interested in is far more than simple submission. I've been waiting for someone as broken as me. Someone who truly needs to give up complete control and rely on me to take away her pain. And then I found her. Katia, my kitten. The moment I laid eyes on her gorgeous face, full lips, and seductive curves, she stole the air from my lungs. It's been so long since I've wanted something so intensely. She devours my every waking moment, teasing me with just a taste. She's refused my collar, and I know why. The last one she wore wasn't by choice. This time, she's going to beg for it. I can give her what he didn't, true domination and trust. I'll own her pleasure, her happiness, and she can sate my desire for complete control. I only need her to give me a chance, just one chance to buy her uh, to buy her the moment she agrees and steps on that stage at the auction, she's mine. So an auction, I think BDSM series or collection. Now these next four books, um, I went ahead and picked the books for the rest and I'll still do um, quarterly for what the next books for the Autism Reads are, but I went ahead and selected the books for the rest of the year. So you're getting a sneak peek. I'm not telling you what month these are for, but these authors are all autistic, so they will be in the Autism Reads Read-Along. The, read the Discord for that channel is always linked in the description box of every video that I do. Unless I forget on one video here or there, but for the most part, it's always that Discord is always in the description box. And the aim is to read a book by an author every month that is autistic. And I have started to rotate. Um, so this year is when I rotated. So for one month, we'll do an adult, and then we'll do a young adult, and then a middle grade, and then it will start over. So each quarter has one of each age range. So again, these next four, they are all... Um, autistic authors. This first one being Matt Haig, and the book is How to Stop Time. Tom Hazard has just moved back to London to settle down and become a history teacher, but while he may look like an ordinary 41-year-old owing to a rare condition, he's been alive for centuries. He has lived history firsthand, performing with Shakespeare, exploring the high seas with Captain Cook, and sharing cocktails with Fitzgerald. Now he just wants a normal life. Unfortunately for Tom, the Albatross Society, the secretive group that protects people like him, has one rule. Never fall in love. But on his first day, he meets a captivating French teacher who seems fascinated by him. And now one thing Tom can't have. And now the one thing Tom can't have just happens to be the one thing that might save him. So, how to stop time. That sounds interesting. Now if I remember right, I think these next two out of these authors that are autistic also have LGBT rep. One of them I know for sure, the other one I think, but I can't remember for sure, but I think it was a tag when I looked it up. But this next one for sure uh, is The Outside by Ada Hoffman, and this is actually book number one in a series. Super intelligent AI gods rule the galaxy. Their algorithms determine the rewards you reap before and after death. But the gods give and the gods take away. And Yasira has never been good at gods. Autistic science scientist Yasira Sheehan has developed a radical new energy uh, drive on, on board the pride of Jai that could change the future of humanity. And I'm sure I'm saying these names wrong. I'll find out. I'll try and get an audiobook so I can hear how to pronounce it. Anyway, moving on. But when she activates it, reality warps, destroying the space station and everyone left inside. The gods declare her work her her heretical, and Yasaria is abducted by their agents. Instead of simply executing her, they offer mercy, if she'll help them hunt down a bigger target, her mysterious vanished mentor. 
with her home words her home world's fate in the balance, Yesaria must choose who to trust, the gods and the ruthless post-human angels, or the rebel scientist whose unorthodox mathematics could turn her world literally inside out. So, the outside. Now, one of the authors that I'm reading, going to be reading a book from in this upcoming quarter, um, I think... I think in May, could be wrong on that, actually recommended this author, and I did confirm this author's autistic. And the book is A Prayer for Vengeance by Leanne Schwartz. Nice pink foil, shiny, shiny. And there's a cat on the back of that one. It says, Centuries after a miracle was, uh, a miracle was vanquished, trust Tristato's monsters. Okay, hang on. Let me start that over. Centuries after a miracle vanquished Tristato's monsters and turned the soldiers fighting against them into stone, Milo lovingly tends to the statues of those who protected the city. Raised with devout Templars and scholars, autistic temple ward Milo wants nothing more than to be accepted into their ranks. When his prayers admiring her heroic sacrifice accidentally free Gia from stone, she wakes with the fury to kill the man Milo owes his life to, Primo Sanct Aneo. And again, I'm sure I'm saying these names wrong, but I'll try to get an audiobook again so I can hear how to say them. Gia claims that the immortal holy leader Milo lives to serve is the same man who betrayed her and transformed her into a statue. And what Milo always believed was a miracle was actually a curse that Gia will stop at nothing to break, even if she has to kill his followers to do it, even if she must kill the boy who woke her. And this next one for Autism Reads is Mujag, and you can probably tell from this title what age category, or not from the title, but from the cover, what this age category is. But this is Moo Jag and the Auto Code Secret by N.E. McMorrin. So, and if you're assuming a certain one, more than likely you're probably correct, but anyway. If Nima can't uncover a lost boy's true identity in time, they may never escape the sticky world he designed. When Nima and her friends discover a hidden sugar-hooked society, Holding lost kids, they find their perfect world in danger. The strange place hides the truth about Nima's missing brother, and a plot to destroy the free life she knows. But only they can reserve a code to prevent a rock candy robot invasion and rescue the captives. Fail, and they might never make it back home. Okay, now this next portion of this stack are all ones that I found advertised on Instagram and check them out. Um, one of them, I will link, like, um, if it's an author, I'll link the author's website. So if you're interested in these, you can check them out. And I've just noticed that I have two different series by the same author, so I'm just going to move things around a little bit. Okay, so I will list the author's website in the description box uh, for two of these, for the two authors. One of these is actually a, kind of like a book box that came with just the book and like an art print. Um, not safe for work. Oh yeah, not safe for work. <laughs> so um, I will list the um, website in case you're interested in. These are dark, very dark, kind of taboo, very dark romance books. So. Um, my understanding is these will be very steamy, very explicit. So please be aware of that. And there, there's a chance that you will get not safe for work art with these books. And these are special edition books. So for this particular one, I will list the company that I found on Instagram. I will list that company's website in the description box. I'll also try to remember to link the author's Instagram handle in case you're interested in that. Um, and the book box, their Instagram as well. And the one that came from a book box, so this is a special edition book, is Caution Tape. This was written by, co-authored by Molly Doyle and J.D. Midnight. I cannot show you the art print that I have on the inside, <laughs> but it has red foil for like blood splatter and blood drippage. Um, and then Caution Tape sprayed edges with blood stains um, on there as well. It says, I'm a caged monster in all see in all of time and space who has finally gotten the strength 
to break free. And I don't think, if I remember right, there is not a synopsis. Let me double check. So the book box this came in was Read in Peace and it came with a signed book sticker. Ooh, I hope you didn't see that. Uh, let's see. Okay. And then same on the front and the back. Okay, so this one I've just had to pull up on Goodreads because there is no synopsis in the book. So I've got Goodreads pulled up on my phone and I'll give you the synopsis for Caution Tape. It says... So there's two POVs. We have Cora and Nolan. So underneath Cora, it says, is exhausting pretending to be normal. Go to therapy, hold down a job, smile. So much smiling. All I can do is attempt to corral the burning rage that sits in my chest. It's getting hard. My mask is slipping. I'm slowly losing my grip. Reality is getting blurry. I'm yearning to lash out, to taste blood. For someone to see me for what I truly am. And then underneath Nolan, it says... I've kept myself in check, built the perfect lie, a well-adjusted man with his entire life ahead of him, allowed myself only daytime fantasies and night drives. It's not enough. I'm too hungry. Then there's her, chipping away at my lie piece by piece. I see her. She has a darkness in her eyes that matches mine. I want her. I want her wrapped in plastic, squirming and begging me for mercy. My trophy, my toy mine and so it begins one game two mutual monsters it does say reader discretion is advised so you will need to look up content and trigger warnings um, it says this is a darkest book to date with a load of trigger warnings but it does not list what those trigger warnings are um, and this is a dark horror romance it does have the tags erotica and bdsm as well Okay, and then the other author, the one that I did the mystery book unboxing, I'll list her, Willow Winters. I'll list her website in the description box as well, and as well as these two other authors. So this other one, I saw this advertisement for on Goodreads, and if I remember right, not on Goodreads, on Instagram. If I remember right, this is a black author, um, and this is a series, so I'm only going to read the synopsis for book number one, and this is Court uh, Court High, book number one, written by Needon O'Neill. So book number one is They the Pretty Stars. And this is the, like, the discreet version. I really like the discreet versions of these. I like the simplicity of them. Book number two, right, yes, is Illusions That May. Book number three is Court Kept, right? Yeah. <laughs> All of a sudden I was thinking Corrupt. Might be some corruption in there, who knows. And then the last book in this particular series is We the Pretty Stars. All by Eden O'Neill. And this one, when I ordered these, it did come with a bookmark that says the reading order for these books or the suggested reading order, so the promotional bookmark. And this series is the first one to start with, it looks like. If I were to read exactly as it is for the four series, there's two that are... Um, four books and the other two that are just that are trilogies and so if I read them all in this order then according to the bookmark that's what it is okay so the synopsis for book one which is they the pretty stars this one says a town full of secrets a dark elite a girl who crossed the wrong king they call them the court an elite boys club who rule Windsor Preparatory Academy like gods among men and of course, they're led by Hercules himself. Royal Prince, yes, that's actually his name, walks around the school and the town like he owns them. His affiliation to the prestigious court only gives him more clout. These boys do anything they want. They take anything they want, and they screw anything they want, in that order. Then there's me. I came to Maywood Heights to live with my virtually indifferent father because my sister went AWOL. She chose to move with him... Yeah, she chose to move with him after our father decided to uproot years ago and forget anything related to her late mother. I stayed with our aunt, but my sister and I had always remained close. She'd never gone off the grid. The new girl, I arrived at Maywood Heights to find her. The last thing I imagined when enrolling at her school was that she'd be connected to a group like the court and the boys like Royal. And boys like Royal. She's nothing like them, and so much better than Royal and his elitist attitude. So why then are they saying he's her best friend? 
So I think, I'm wondering if this is like a Dark Academia series? I'm not sure. Okay, now this next one is the discrete version of this, and it is part of a duology. And it is, according to Goodreads, it's co-authored, um, and the authors are J.L. Beck and C. Hallman. Now the cover for these ones that I'm going to show you only have the name of J.L. Beck. This is the D Diavolo Crime Family, so this is like a mafia crime family. Book number one is Devil You Know. I was sold by the cover, or no, Devil You Hate is the book number one in the series. Book number two is Devil You Know. Very similar, except one has a pair of handcuffs on there, right there, and the other one has a wedding ring, 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 ring or engagement ring right there. So, other than that, pretty much identical covers. So, Devil You Hate is the first one. Okay. It says, They call me the devil, deranged and violent, gorgeous but frightening. I am a businessman, so when one of my debtors offers me his fiance in exchange for a debt settled, I figure why not? The woman will be a quick sell. Repayment comes in the form of a beautiful but haunted young woman. The light in her tempts the darkness inside of me, teases it, tortures it. I want to hurt her. I want to break her. I want to keep her. Luckily for Celia, she fails to see that there is no goodness in me, and when she attempts to draw me in with her innocence and sweet, naive heart, I thrive to show her the cruel monster I am. And so I will not read, because this is a duology, I'm not going to read the synopsis of book two. So that's all you get right now. Now eventually, when I do like a build a TBR, after I've read this one, I will read the synopsis of this one in whatever video the second book goes on to. But as of right now, I'm just sticking with the first book in the series synopsis. Okay, and these last three are all by uh, J.L. Beck as well. Um, now, one of these does, when I pull it up on Goodreads, says it's like the fourth or the fifth book in a, I think it's another Mafia crime family series, but the other two look more like standalones, and so, but since you or I could order these as a bundle, I'm taking it that I can read them all as standalones, so I will read all three of the synopsis for these ones. And the author is J.L. Beck, so beautiful covers. This first one is Savage Vow. And it says, it started with a single look, my obsession, my desire, and need to possess, the sweet and incredibly naive Elena Romero. Like a thief, I came in the dead of night and stole her away from her protected castle and placed her in a gilded cage made of gold. Ten millions dollars. Okay. Ten million dollars and a forced signature later and she was mine. The deal was final. The ink on the contract barely dry. She would become my wife. She would bear my children. She would bend to my will. But most importantly, she would help me destroy the man she loved most. The man who took everything from me. Her father. Mm. Next I have is Violent Delights. I just love the simplicity of these covers. The deal was sealed the moment she stepped onto that stage. It was like seeing a ghost. Sunshine, blonde hair pale skin, and azure eyes that held a thousand secrets. I didn't know what caused her to end up on that auction block, and I didn't care either. All I knew was that I had to have her, no matter the cost. One million dollars later, and she became just that. Mine to break, mine to use, mine to keep. We all have secrets, and when I disclose hers, no one will be able to save her from me. And the last one that came in this bundle on the author's website, so I will put the author's website in there. She's got some really pretty discreet covers on the website. For years I've watched her, stalked her, followed her. At first it was about protecting her, keeping her safe and out of harm's way. Then it became a full-blown obsession. I vowed to never touch her again, to protect her from everyone, including myself. When enemies lurking in the shadows threaten to take all that away, I know I'll do anything to keep my butterfly safe, even betray the only family I've ever known. Okay, now these four books I got because there's a book box that I got that came with romance books, the Romance Reveal book box. I'll put that website in the description box as well. Um, and three of the books that came in there were part of a series and they were later on in the series. So um, I got the first book in the series and one of them also came with a prequel. So the prequel um, is 
The series is called Love Song. The prequel is called Irreplaceable by Cara Dion. This role could make or break their career and hearts. Olivia Van Aller knows her new Broadway role could be the start of an amazing career. Too bad knowing that didn't stop her from tanking her first rehearsal. Now, her future relies on whether she can generate onstage chemistry with her enigmatic co-star. Getting to know the real him, him won't be easy, but keeping her hands off him in the process might just prove impossible. The last thing Damien Chase needs is a sex scandal with a much younger actress. Been there, done that. So he'll spend enough time with the sexy co-star co to make sure they'll be comfortable together on stage but he will not be dumb enough to start up a romantic relationship with the stunning Olivia, or so he keeps telling himself. It's not long before Liv and Damien see that remaining strictly professional isn't in the script for them, but with their careers on the line, will they realize their connection is irreplaceable, or is their love story headed for tragedy, tragedy instead of happily ever after? And then book number one in that series is Indiscreet, again, Sierra Dion. Once he hears her sing, he'll never want anyone else. When aspiring opera singer Melinda Taylor's date stands up on her 21st birthday, she's ready to give up on love, until she meets an irresistible older man who shares her passion for music. Despite the, their incendiary attraction, when they discover her, he's her new professor, she has no choice but to walk away. If only she, she could forget how he made her feel. Man, I'm struggling with talking today. Dr. Liam Jacobs, a physician with a prestigious university music program, is one step closer to his dream of having his own opera company. Getting involved with a student could cost him everything he's ever wanted. But no matter how hard he tries to keep his distance, their connection proves too strong to ignore. Will the music that brought them together be the very thing that tears them apart? So as you can see, music is a big theme in this, especially where the name of the series is Love Song. And this next one is book number one in, does it say, book one of the Heavens Rejects MC series, so Motorcycle Club series. It does say warning adult language on the back. And book number one is Heaven Sent. And this is by Evelyn Page. Two POVs, uh, one under Danny and one suggests his hero. So underneath Danny, it says, Danny was living a nightmare. All she wanted was to find a safe place to hide out and reinvent herself, praying she could leave her past behind her. She never intended to get caught in the middle of a biker war, and she never dreamed she'd have to work so hard to avoid the one man that sets her soul on fire, Hero. Hero is a broken man. His only loyalty is to the club, and he takes his job as vice president very seriously. When Danny is brought to the clubhouse, he knows he can't trust her, but there's something about the mysterious beauty that makes him burn. There are secrets in her eyes and lies in her smile, and those secrets come out. As those secrets come out and her lies are revealed, Hero's heart and loyalty to his club are about to be put to the test. Can a fallen angel with blood-covered wings and the devil himself resist temptation, or will they risk burning hellfire down on everything? Oh, bringing hellfire down on everything they love. So, and this next one um, is book number two in the series. This one and everything that comes from the Romance Reveal book box is spicy. You might get one that does not have any spice very rarely. And that's per their, and I'll put their Instagram in the description box as well. But I'll get to that when I get to the six books that I got in their box. Uh, Lauren Landish is the author. I told you she'd come up again. And this is book number two. But the title, I don't know what the series name is, but the title is The Wrong Bridesmaid. The Wedding, the Towns, so this is book number one in the series. The Wedding the Towns Been Waiting For could become the love story no one expected. Wyatt Ford hightailed it out of Cold Springs to get away from his influential family and the unwanted privilege that came with it. Returning for his brother's wedding dredges up every reason he left. One unexpected bright spot, a Kirby knockout who slings burgers, hustles pool, and hates the last name Ford. 
Hazel Sullivan is fiercely independent and happy to be the maid of honor for her best friend's wedding, but she isn't looking for romance, especially not with a man whose family is dividing her town into a battleground with their development plans. Fighting the family is easy. Fighting Wyatt? Not so much. Why does the enemy have to be so drop-dead gorgeous? The sparks that fly between Hazel and Wyatt might start out as combat, but one kiss and it's a total surrender. How is a happy ever after even possible for two people with so little in common, except, of course, for an overwhelming attraction and that growing temptation to say, I do, themselves? Uh, this next one, um, or first one in this group of four, is Boys of Tommen, book number two, written by Chloe Walsh. These, this takes place in Ireland. And at least the first book does. We'll see if the book, this next one, which I'm assuming it will, will continue in being in Ireland. Uh, Keeping 13 is this, this book. I like this cover. Falling in love was the easy part. What comes next is the test. Johnny Cavanaugh's first, last, and only true love has always been rugby, until now. Following a devastating injury that has left him stripped of his beloved number 13 jersey, Johnny struggles to hold on to his dreams as they crumble around him. Lost and desperate, he sets his sights on unraveling the, mis the mystery of the girl with the midnight blue eyes who haunts his every waking hour, Shannon Lynch. But navigating the future, even together, isn't as easy as it once seemed. Keeping secrets has never been a problem for Shannon. The life she was born into demands nothing less. After all, demons and evil men don't just exist in fairy tales. They exist in her world, too. Traumatized beyond repair after her return from Dublin and desperate to protect her little brothers, Shannon finds herself struggling like never before, barely keeping her head above water. Her walls are up, and only one boy has the ability to reach her heart. But when new truths come to light and old wounds are reopened, will love be enough to help them heal? Or is their future forever broken? Um, I am only, I'm around 240, so around 250 pages into the first book in this series, which is Binding 13. Um, please be aware there are several trigger warnings. The language is rough, although some of this language just is going to be more common and not consider bad words that in Ireland that might be considered bad words in the US um, so but content warning so far I can tell you is child abuse neglect um, and when I say child abuse I'm talking physical and emotional so and bullying is a big thing too okay this next one is volume two in a manga series and it is a man and his cat by Umi Sakur Sakurai so, um, it's just about a man and his cat, this cat that he adopts, and now we're continuing their life as they bond more. But it's a manga, and just again, this man adopts a cat from a pet store, and it is their life. So, that's literally what it is. And these next two are series continuations, and that is the, the Complete Cheese Sweet Home. Um, the, these are mangas except these ones are, because they're translated the and are manga um, bind-ups, they're now more in like the graphic novel type format, but originally mangas, and each volume has like at least three to five of the original books in a bind-up. So um, I got part three and the last one, which is number four. And it's just all from the kitten's POV of figuring out more about who she is. Her name is Chi or Chai. Chi. I think it's Chi. And she's just going through life. And it's just basically contemporary from a cat's point of view. Okay, now these next six books are all from the Romance Reveal book box. And this first one is book number five in the Heaven's Rejects series. And this one is by Evelyn Page, and it is Resolution. All she wants is him. All he wants is her freedom. Ginny Azzo has never had an easy life, but for the first time, she's truly happy with where she is. Her focus is on her future with the man she loves, despite her older brother's disapproval. Lucas Slider Sterling spent four years behind bars for the Heaven's Rejects Motorcycle Club. 
MC. Okay. Now he's out and ready to start his life with Ginny, but the danger's not over, and Slider will have to make a choice. His club or her freedom. How much is he willing to sacrifice for the woman he loves? All right, and this next one is called Last Round. This is a Murphy's Bar novel by Frankie Page. Mistake number one, hitting on my best friend's little sister. Mistake number two, not recognizing her. Mistake number three, do you know what? Never mind. Let's just say ever since the smoking hot redhead walked into my bar and threw a drink in my face, I've been a fucking mess. That's it. No punchline. Because my life has turned into one giant cosmic joke. Worst part is, it doesn't end there. I've tried to ignore her, remind myself of all the reasons this could never happen. But Molly Walsh has other plans, and listening to my bullshit excuses ain't one of them. She might only be a buck twenty soaking wet, but she's got this former light heavyweight champ on the ropes. I want her, and she knows it. The dangerous part is, she wants me too. She's 12 years younger than me. She's my employee, and if her brother finds out, he's going to kill me. Next one is book number two in the Love Song series by uh, Cara Dion. This one is Undeniable. Pretending to be in love never felt so real. Noah doesn't believe in falling in love, and he definitely doesn't do relationships. But unless he can convince his future boss that his playboy days are over, he'll lose out on his dream job. When his little sister's best friend suggests that they pretend to date, it seems like the perfect solution. Or it would be if she wasn't the only woman he, who'd ever made him question his own rules. Callie doesn't need anyone else to take care of her, especially not her best friend's overbearing older brother, even if she has been in love with him since she was 12 years old. Determined to get her mother to stop meddling in her life, a fake relationship with Noah could be the answer to both their problems. But sharing a hotel room for a week wasn't in the plan, and the more time they spend together, the more it feels like she's only fooling herself. Can they face the truth they've been denying for years, that love is the exception to every rule? This next one is Nothing But It All by Adriana Loki. Locke? Loki? I'm not quite sure on how to say that last name. At long last, it could be love again. After 20 years, the cracks in Lauren Reed's marriage are showing. She and her husband, Jack, feel more like roommates than a loving couple. What they have in common are two wonderful teenagers, Michael and Maddie, and some wistful question. And the same wistful question, when did it all go wrong? Now that Lauren's decided to get on with her life, alone, divorce is inevitable. Not to the kids. They, are, they aren't giving up so easily. Michael and Maddie have conspired with their grandfather to bring everyone together for a vacation in the family's favorite summer getaway, a rustic lakeside cabin in Storybrooke, Ohio. Awkward? Yep. A little deceptive? Sure. But as far as traps go, Lauren and Jack agree. The meddlers couldn't have set one that was more scenic or filled with so many bittersweet memories. The trip is going to be life-changing for the whole family. 14 days of hope, heartbreak, and unexpected possibilities, like maybe falling in love all over again. This next one is book number two in the series that I showed book one earlier by Lauren Landish. This one is called The Wrong Guy. I'm not sure what the series is called. Why does the wrong guy have to feel so good? When uh, Ren Ford is the city attorney for Cold Springs, a job she takes seriously. Good thing she has a great form of stress relief, a friends with benefits arrangement with the well-muscled and very attract attentive construction worker Jesse Sullivan. Ren's heart secretly craves more, but how can she fess up her feelings to a man who doesn't want to get tied down? Jesse is head over heels in love with Ren, but he can't picture a happily ever after. What would an attorney and out-of-his-league goddess want with him? Especially when a flirty, cocky lawyer who screams money and power shows an interest in Ren. As a scandalous high-profile split escalates from name-calling to corporate takeovers, Ren and Jesse must team up to find a way to protect the people and the town they love, and everyone in Cold Springs is rooting for them to figure out that maybe, against all odds, they're made for each other. And the last book that came in the Romance Reveal book box is The Art of Falling by Melissa Toppin. I like this cover. Although I don't like the back, um, only because the, the font is so small. It's like half the size of the font on the inside. 
I had a lot of plans entering my senior year of college. Dealing with Archer Copeland in any capacity was most definitely not on that list. The cocky quarterback and I have been at odds since last year when he posed naked for one of my art classes. Okay, so he was wearing a towel, but really, that barely even counts. Apparently, he enjoyed how uncomfortable the whole situation made me and decided that messing with me was his new favorite pastime. Fast forward to now. My art professor has just assigned us a two-week project that we have to partner with a volunteer from the football team to complete. And of course, Archer is being the a-hole that he is. Thinks being the a-hole that he is, thinks he'll have a good laugh by giving me no choice but to partner with him. After all, who says no to the guy who took our losing team all the way to the championship game in a single session? I'll tell you who. No one. Well, except for me. I seem to be the only person on campus not completely enamored by his good looks and incredible talent. Simply put, I have bigger things to focus on, like landing an internship for one of the most prestigious design firms in the country. And no one, not even Archer Copeland, is going to get in my way. Problem is, Archer has a, is a hard man to say no to, especially when he has you pinned to a wall, kissing you like you're the freshest damn water he's ever tasted and he's seconds away from dying of dehydration. Yeah, I think it's safe to say things just got a little complicated. Okay, these last books in this video, there's one, two, three, four, five, just five more books in this video. All five of these are for buddy reads or like group reads or book clubs. So, yep, yeah, that's what these ones are for. There's seven. <laughs> I just had two of these are group reads for, one is a group read for this month and one is for a readathon prompt where it's to have a friend recommend a book. And so that's what those ones are. So I'll set those ones to the side. We'll do those ones last. So these ones are for future months. This group of five. Uh, up first I have Show Us Who You Are by Ellie Mc... McNoll. I'm guessing is how that's said. My family never talks about me being autistic. I don't know why. I don't see anything wrong with it. It's like they all forgot until pomegranate. Right, yeah, okay. My brother's company, Pomegranate Institute, creates incredible lifelong holograms that allow people to talk to actors, musicians, and even family long after they've died. And they want to make a gram of me because I am autistic, because I see things other people miss. And there's a lot of neurotypicals, there's a lot neurotypicals can learn from my brain. My best friend, Adrian, doesn't think it's such a good idea. But Adrian isn't here right now, and I know what it's like to lose someone. I don't ever want to have to say goodbye again. Next, I have This Wretched Valley by Jenny Kiefer. Take only pictures, leave only bones. This trip is going to be Dylan's big break. Her geologist friend, Clay, has discovered an untouchable cliff face in the Kentucky wilderness, and she is going to be the first person to climb it. Together with Clay, his research assistant Sylvia, and Dylan's boyfriend Luke, Dylan is going to document her achievement on Instagram and finally cement her place as the next rising star in rock climbing. Seven months later, three bodies are discovered in the trees just off the highway. All are in various states of decay. One, a stark white skeleton. The second, emptied of its organs. And the third, a mutilated corpse with the tongue, eyes, ears, and fingers removed. But Dylan is still missing, and no trace of her, dead or alive, has been discovered. Uh, were the climbers murdered? Did they succumb to cannibalism? Or are their impossible bodies the work of an even more sinister force? This... Okay, and then it said, says it's a debut. So, Next up I have Hijab Butch Blues by Lamia H. I hope to find an audiobook. Uh, let's see. Oh, it's a memoir. Okay, so no synopsis. It says it's a daring, provocative, and radically hopeful coming-of-age memoir by a queer hijab Muslim immigrant who, by interpreting stories from the Quran, finds the strength, purpose, and self-acceptance to finally build the life she wants. Okay, next I have Night Watching by Tracy Sierra. Home alone with her young children during a blizzard, a mother tucks her son back into bed in the middle of the night. She hears a noise. Old houses are always making some kind of noise. But this sound is disturbingly familiar. It's the tread of footsteps, unusually heavy and slow, coming up the stairs. She sees the figure of a man appear down the hallway, shrouded in the shadows. Terrified, she quietly wakes her children and hustles them into the oldest part of the house, a tiny, secret room concealed behind a wall. 
There they hide as the man searches for them, trying to tempt the children out with promises and scare the mother into surrender. In the suffocating darkness, the mo mother struggles to remain calm, to plan. Should, should she, she search for a weapon or attempt escape? But then she catches another glimpse of him, that face, that voice. And at once she knows her situation is even more dire than she feared, because she knows exactly who he is and what he wants. And then the last book for um, a future read-along or book club is The Unmaking of June Farrell. I finally got that title right by Adrienne Young. I keep saying The Unmasking, but it's The Unmaking. In the small mountain town of Jasper, North Carolina, June Farrow is waiting for fate to find her. The Farrow women are known for their thriving flower farm and for the mysterious curse that has plagued their family line. The whole town remembers the madness that led to Susanna Farrow's disappearance, leaving her daughter June to be raised by her grandmother and haunted by rumors. It's been a year since June started seeing and hearing things that aren't there. Faint wind chimes, a voice calling her name, and a mysterious door appearing out of nowhere. So I'm going to end there because my battery is flashing. Um, I'm going to just end this here. So these other two books that I got for this month, I will include in a future book call um, for March. But I'm going to end this here. Let me know. Have you read any of these books or books from any of these authors? Uh, yeah, let me know your thoughts. Talk to me in the comment section below. And until next time, stay true to yourself and enjoy a good book. And I'll talk to you later.